All right. So let's talk about a topic that people tend to shy away from, a topic that a lot of people are intimidated by. And that topic is farm. And we're not going to talk about specific farm drugs right now. We'll get to that maybe in a different um, episode. However, when we deal with the boards, we need to know test taking strategies. And when it comes to farm, there's really only five ways that the boards will ask about pharmacological questions. So again, there's really only five different ways that the boards are going to ask about farm questions. So when you approach a farm subject, when you when you get to whether you're in cardio or GI or endocrine or maternity, whatever it is, and you see any type of drug pop up, I want you to approach it with the following way. And just think about this, these five different ways that the boards can ask. The first one is just identifying the drug. Um, if you're going to have, for instance, um, a cardiovascular drug, think about the ones that are commonly prescribed for common medical conditions. Those are going to be the ones that are high yield. Again, that's the ones that are common medical conditions and the drugs that we prescribe for them. So we need to know and identify them. So for instance, I'll use statins as an example. Do you think high cholesterol or coronary artery disease or the risk factors that lead up to that are things that are high yield, things like diabetes, hypertension, uh, family history, smoking, obesity, bad diet, lack of exercise, so on and so forth. Do you think these are common issues in the world? They are. They are. They can lead to atherosclerotic plaques. So we're looking at drugs like statins, commonly prescribed. They're great drugs. So identifying them, things like simvastatin, atorvastatin, lovastatin, just knowing what they do, knowing that they are lipid-lowering agents, because that would be a freebie type of a question. So a patient comes in, and I'll give you an example of a question right now. A patient comes in with a total cholesterol level of 280, when our normal should be under 200, what, which of the following drugs does the nurse expect to be used? And they'll throw in four different drugs and statins will be one of them. So identification, a freebie question, just knowing the drug, knowing what it's used for and identifying it. If I have a drug, the second way that the boards can ask a farm question regarding that drug is the side effects, is the side effects. So again, common medical condition, commonly prescribed drug, and now I need to know the side effects. So for instance, we'll stick with statins because they're great drugs, they're super high yield. So if I was to ask a patient regarding a side effect of the drug statins, I would want to know that this patient is able to identify the drug first and then know the side effects of it because I'm going to have to educate the patient on that side effect. So for instance, the side effect for statins is a myopathy, more specifically, rhabdomyolysis. So we get a patient that comes in who has recently prescribed statins, which of the following are we going to educate this patient on? Well, if you develop any type of muscle pain, muscle aches after taking this medication, please notify your healthcare provider. That would be the proper answer. Again, education, maybe it could be um, a freebie type of a question. Um, they could throw education into a select all that apply. So side effects are definitely another way that the pay, uh, that the boards can ask pharmacological questions. The next one 
is contraindications. Contraindications. So what substances, what drugs are not allowed to be taken with this other drug? So with statins, we'll talk about the fact that statins are in fact going to be contraindicated with grapefruit products. So if we have grapefruit products, we're gonna educate again, education, that you are not to consume anything that contains grapefruit or grapefruit itself. So contraindications, statins, no grapefruit. So, and just like you see here in the quick tip, another drug that's great is nitrates, which are potent vasodilators, and NAFILs, your verdanophil, tadanophil, and um, uh, sildenafil. So these are your what? Your erectile dysfunction drugs. So those are contraindicated, right? Two potent vasodilators. We're not going to give them together. But sticking with the statins, grapefruits. Grapefruits. So again, I add that to education along with side, side effects. Well, now I'm kind of building myself a select law that apply. Could it be a straightforward question, a freebie question? Absolutely. But can I start to build a select all that apply because I educated you on muscle aches and muscle pains, knowing that rhabdomyolysis is a side effect? Absolutely. Contraindications with grapefruit, education? Absolutely. Now I'm starting to build a select all that apply along with freebie questions. Dosages. Well, maybe you don't need to necessarily know the dosage of every drug. There are some drugs that you really do need to know dosages for. Um, drugs like adenosine, big, atropine, big. These are drugs where you actually need to know the dosages and how they're administered. But with statins, let's stick with, again, the theme of statins right here. With statins, if I was to give a patient, if I was to start a patient on a statin and their baseline cholesterol was 280, that's why I started it. And now I gave them a statin and I told them from 280, they went down to 240. Well, is the medication working? The medication is in fact working. It did what it's supposed to do, 280 to 240. It did what it's supposed to do by dropping the total cholesterol. Did we get to under 200? No, we didn't get to under 200. That's our optimal level. So what are we gonna do about our dosage? Well, we'd have to either increase the dosage or we're gonna have to increase the frequency. But either ways, I'm adjusting the dosage. Do I need to know exactly that I'm going from 10 milligram to 20 or 20 to 40 milligrams of Simvastatin? No, I don't need to know that. Um, not for this drug in particular, but I do know that I'm not under 200. So increase the dose, a generic idea, or increase the frequency. And the last way that the boards can ask the pharmacological questions is by education, education. So let's stick with, again, the statins. We're going to educate this patient that prior to, prior to starting their statins, we are going to get their liver function tests or their LFTs. The reason being is that the statins are metabolized by the liver if the liver is not intact, we're not going to be metabolizing the statins and making them bioavailable or effective like we would like. We also don't want to cause more damage to the liver because it is going to take a toll on the liver. So we're going to educate the patient. Hey, before you take a statin, we're going to get some lab work done. So go ahead and get your blood work. We'll check your liver function test, which is what? your ALT and your AST. The second thing that I'm gonna educate this patient on with statins is we're gonna take it at bedtime. And I'm using the word bedtime 
because I don't like the word nighttime. Many of you work night shifts or swing shifts, but nighttime is not necessarily going to be your bedtime. We want to take it at bedtime because we want the patient to be in a fasting state. We want them to release cholesterol so statins can, in fact, help lower the cholesterol, lower the triglycerides, lower that lousy LDL and that increase that happy or that HDL cholesterol. So a recap of the five ways that the boards are going to ask pharmacological questions. So first and foremost is just identifying the drug, knowing what it is, freebie type of a question. Know your drugs, identify them. Side effects, if they're commonly prescribed drugs for a common medical condition, you have to know the side effects. You're going to have to educate your patients on those side effects. Any type of contraindications doesn't have to be another drug that's contraindicated with it. It could be a, any type of a product or any type of a vitamin, mineral, or um, in this situation, a produce, grapefruit. Dosages. Again, there are going to be drugs that want specific dosages. How are we going to administer, like I said, adenosine atropine? Yeah, you want to know those dosages. But how about a generic, hey, it's not working to where we want it to work, or we haven't hit that optimal level. What are we going to do about the dosage in general? Increase it, um, increase the dose, increase the frequency, things of that nature. And the last one is education. So things on how to use the drug. Um, how about things like patches, uh, sublingual drugs, the do's and don'ts, um, and points of clarification and understanding. Things like, oh, I'm going to take my diuretic in the morning. Okay, that sounds about right. Oh, I'm going to take my diuretic before I go to bed. Mm, unless you want to be up all night peeing, yeah, you probably don't. So again, that further teaching, further intervention type of a question. So. These are the five different ways that the boards can ask farm questions. Although an intimidating topic, if you know when you look at a farm or uh, any type of a pharmacological drug and you, you say, okay, wait a minute, if I look at this and I take away these five points and you just kind of make a note, when you take notes, just under a drug, if you don't know it or you know it very well, just make sure to hit these five points and kind of bullet point them. And if you can answer these five questions regarding that drug, you shouldn't be intimidated when the boards ask you about that specific drug as well. So again, I hope you enjoyed the five different ways that the boards will ask farm questions. Don't be intimidated and best of luck. Take care.